Welcome to the sixth lesson of Introducing Quantum Mechanics and in this video we would be talking about Dirac notation and which is also known as the bra and the cat notation. Now this notation is extensively used in quantum mechanics. So I have divided this particular lesson that is the bra and the cat notation or the Dirac notation into several small videos. So this is the first part of the video that is why I have written is as 6.1 and then there will be further lessons and videos which would be extending and explaining about Dirac notation. So this is the first video on this because this is important I would be creating more videos and explaining you everything about the bra and cat notation. My name is Shaunak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to 6.1 lesson of introducing quantum mechanics explaining Dirac notation. Ok, so as we usually do let us see what are the topics we are covering. First I would like to tell you what is the lesson plan for this particular topic. What are the notations in quantum mechanics? What is called the Dirac notation which is commonly known as the bra and ket notation, how are they used, operations using bra and ket, what is an orthonormal basis, the famous Schrodinger's cat paradox and the probability. So first I would like to show you what is the notation in quantum mechanics but before that a quick glimpse on the lesson plan that I have planned. So you see the bra and ket notation I would be taking first at the beginners level. That means it will be explaining a more or less complete overview of all the concept, the usage, the notations etc. Then I would go to the intermediate level where I would be showing you how these notations are extensively used in wave functions and further other complex uh, equations in quantum physics. Then I would be going to the advanced level where I would explain further the concepts of quantum mechanics and especially how the direct notation is used. So this is my lesson plan and I would be giving you each and every intricate details of Dirac's notation. So first we will start with the beginners level and then we would move slowly one after the other. Ok, so what is bra and ket? So in modern context uh, bra and ket notation can be compared to modern row and column vectors uh, with complex components as um, uh, quantum physics deals with complex components. Now matrix multi multiplication rules apply with result usually of more than one row and column. Now vector inside and outside products are also following modern rules. So it was basically founded first by Paul Dirac and uh, uh, the Dirac's notation as it is called is uh, present notation of row and column vectors was developed and it is used using this angular brackets and the vertical bars. So in quantum mechanics bracket notation or Dirac notation is used to denote quantum state. Uh, the notation uses angle brackets and a verti vertical bar. Now if you are really wondering what is a quantum state you can go back to my previous videos in this playlist uh, quantum mechanics. So a ket is usually formed using this one and mathematically it denotes vector for example V in the abstract or complex vector space uh, capital V and physically it represents a state of some quantum state. A bra is of the form this right and it mathematically it denotes a linear form of F uh, which has got a linear map from each vector V to a number in the complex plane that is C. So letting the linear function f act on a vector it is it can be written in a set theory form which I have ignored for this. So in general this is the first way in which we encounter bra and ket notation but uh, more illustrations and examples coming up at this video will make you clear. Okay so the bra and ket is a way of writing vectors and it is used in quantum physics like this. So you see this is how we write it bra followed by a horizontal then ket with the angular bracket and I would like to show you this is a kind of a vector in three dimensions a, b and c. 
Now we can write as a column vector like this or we can write it in a cat form something like this. Right. So this is how it is written. So the same ABC is in a column vector and in a cat form it is written as this. But remember cats are something special. What is special I would like to show you now in the video. So if I take the same thing as this then what happens is that the values of A, B and C which we have just seen are complex numbers. Right. So they are complex numbers and it can be imaginary numbers or a combination of both. A cat is a kind of a quantum state and cats can have any number of dimensions including infinite dimensions which you would later see in Hilbert space in the advanced part. So the bra is similar but the values are in a row, right? And each element is the complex conjugate of each of the cats element. Let us see an example to make things clear. So if this one is 2 minus 3i6 plus 4i3 minus ei and this has its bra written as this. You can see the values are now in a row and we have also changed the sign that is the plus to the minus. So changing a cat into a bra is basically it make, making it as a conjugate transpose. Uh, I think you are quite familiar with the terms in linear algebra. So 2 minus 3i becomes 2 plus 3i and so on and the transpose means it is your swapping with columns. Okay. So far so good. Now multiplying a bra into a cat looks something like this. Okay. So we use matrix multiplication and particularly I would say we use the dot product. So we use the matrix multiplication. So you here you see we match the first member 1 and 7 uh, multiplying with the second member 2 and 2 and the third member 3 and 4 and so on. And finally we sum them up and we get the value. Okay, so in effect, uh, we can say that dot product projects one vector onto another, right? So this is what A is projected on B. And I can show you a very similar and, a, uh, you know, even lucid example. We can uh, think of a light shining on this. So you, here you see this is the shaded region. And when light is shining on this and when there is no shadow, we say that the vectors are at right angles and the dot product is zero. This is quite elementary, but I just uh, thought because this is a kind of a, uh, you know, I would say illustration given in Daniel Fleisch in his book by shining a shadow, which is uh, shown physically on a YouTube video. So this is so the shadow region, A projected on B, and when there is no shadow, you can imagine is as the dot product is zero. Okay, so the dot product, remember, uh, of a vector with itself is the length of the vector. That means length times length. It is length square. Uh, we can see an example, something like this. Uh, you can see this one is how it is. It's uh, the dot products uh, give results to 5 and so on. We can uh, further take the, the length of the vector. We can take this one and using Pythagoras, we can get into square root of 34. So, yeah. So, you see that how it is being done. So, the first one stands for 5 and then we take the dot product. 1, 2, uh, minus 2 and 5. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, that is how it is. And then we take the square root of 34 and whatever. You know, we can uh, get the length of that. Okay. So, uh, now we come to something very important, which is called the basis of a vector. So, uh, I would like to show you a kind of a figure, yes, like this. And we can separate the parts of vector like this. So, ABC, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 plus 0, 1, 0, plus C, 0, 0, 0. Now, what this means that the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all these vectors form the basis uh, that we measure it against. Now, in this case, what happens is that the simple unit vectors, uh, but any set of vectors later we will see can be used when they are independent of each other. That means they can be together span at every part of space. So, done with the basis, but whenever we are base, uh, doing basis, remember that there is something again very important coming up which is called an orthonormal and non-orthonormal basis. Let us see in the next part of the video. So, uh, in most cases, we want an orthonormal basis which is each basis vectors are right angles to each other and uh, that is A dot B equal to zero. Remember, you can just visualize that no shadow is shining when the light is shining and normalized vector has a basis of length. One. Now, we let us see an example. I will show you this is a simple circle. The vectors are at right angles 
and each vector is of length 1. Right, so here it is. Now, if we see this kind of a, a little bit a different thing, then the question arises that is this orthonormal? And that is what I'm going to show in the next part of the video. So here it is, we have taken a dot product and uh, once we calculate it, it uh, results into zero. And then uh, are there lengths one? It is a check. So we will take first A and then we will take B. And if, because the lengths are one, so we can conclude from here that yes, the basis is orthonormal. So you see that we have learnt about the basis, how orthonormal it is, all using the brand cat notation. This is also something which is very important and uh, we have shown that. Now, using this brand kit notation, the physicists use this extensively into quantum physics and what uh, comes most important in quantum physics, I would say rather paradox, which is called the Schrodinger's cat. Now, actually Schrodinger's uh, uh, posed uh, here a question that when does a quantum system stop as a superposition of states and become one or another? Uh, you can say more technically that when does the actual quantum state stop being a non-trivial linear combination of states, each of which resembles different classical states and instead of being to have a unique classical representation. Here, if the cat survives, it remembers only being alive. Now, the explanation of the EPR experiments that are consistent with standard microscopic quantum mechanics require that macroscopic ab objects such as cats, books, houses, etc. do not always have classical descriptions. So, here is uh, the famous Schrodinger's experiment. Now, uh, in quantum mechanics, generally a Schrodinger's cat is uh, considered to be a thought experiment that illustrates a paradox of quantum superposition. In the thought experiment, what happens? A hypothetical cat may be considered which is simultaneously both alive and dead uh, while it is unobserved in a closed box. As a result, uh, its fate being like to be linked to be a kind of a random subatomic event that may or may not occur. So, this thought experiment was devised by physicist Erwin Schrodinger in 1935 in a discussion with Albert Einstein to illustrate what Schrodinger saw as the problem of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. So, here is a demonstration that if the cat can be 1 upon square root of 2 alive plus 1 upon square root of 2 dead. Again, you will see here we are again using the bra and the cat notation. So, that is why I told you that this is important and here we see the practical usage using the direct notation in Schrodinger's cat. Now, it says that the cat is in superposition of the states both alive and dead. Here it comes. So, it is both alive and dead. So, that is the kind of a, I would say, riddle <laughs> quantum mechanics poses. But the question we see here is that why it is 1 upon square root of 2. So, in order to explain that, I have to show you, uh, rather draw in front of you a simple figure. This is a circle and here it shows the dead part, the cat part and the alive part, right? So, this is A and this is the D part. So, the basis is the two vectors, alive and dead. Uh, the cat is shown that it is a probability uh, space as a vector of equal components of A and D. Here it comes. So, the basis, we just learned the basis, so we can use that, uh, is two vectors, alive and dead. Now, our, uh, we know that a normalized vector has a length of 1, because this is not normalized, we need to normalize. So, we, uh, so how do we do that? We know that the dot product of a vector with itself has a length of 1, so we normalized as a a, or we can say 1 square equals to 1, and we normalize the cat vector, and uh, what we get that if we assume uh, a equals to d equals to 1, then we get this, cat cat, it's just an, a kind of an, uh, you know, I would say an uh, illustration of how it happens. So, this goes to 1, and so, uh, w once we start doing it with uh, 1 upper square root of 2, so we assume a equals to d equals to 1 and then cat cat, but uh, if we should get 1. So, we will start doing with 2 and what we get from here is this one. We will turn the page and take this equation forward in order to explain it better. So, here it is when we are doing it with cat cat, we get this one and this one equals to this. If you, if you, if you do the calculation, it comes to 1. 
and we know that a equals to d is equal to 1 upon square root of 2 and from where we obtain this value and now because it has got a length 1 we can say that it is normalized okay so you can get a quick glimpse of this right i mean to say uh, what actually it is what we have done we can go back to this uh, slide also so you see we normalize the vector and then with 1 upon square root of 2 we came here and then we uh, got the value and we know that the value of this so we got the length as 1. Now it is all not over because remember Schrodinger's cat and whatever we are doing in quantum physics actually relates to probability. Now how this probability relates to Schrodinger's cat I will show in the next part of the video. So probability of adding components. So let us try if this is the figure uh, uh, the probability of adding the components of the lengths a and d as shown in the left hand side. So uh, we get probability equal to 1 upon square root of 2 plus 1 upon square root of 2 and it is comes to square root of 2. But, but here is a problem. That probability we know that it cannot be greater than 1. In fact, we need to take the magnitude of each vector and square it. So how do we do that? We do that like this. We square it. I will just explain why do we do the squaring and from here we get 1. So this is called the, uh, if you have watched my earlier videos, this is called Max Born's uh, rule. So using Max Born rule, this is a general rule in quantum physics, this one, that uh, the probability equals uh, the amplitude mag uh, of a ma amplitude magnitude which is squared and we can tell this one. So probability equal to amplitude squared. So this is how uh, actually things uh, take up from here. And what we can tell from here is that the bra and ket notation which was established in 1939 by Paul Dirac is also known as Dirac notation. Second, the bra and ket we have seen is a simple way to refer to a vector with complex elements, any number of dimension that represents one state in a state space and the probability of any state equals the magnitude of its vector squared. So this is the lesson, this is the first part in where we understood, we used the Brian Kett notation and most importantly we have seen that how it affects the normal and orthonormal basis I would say and how it is used and it is used for further for calculations. I really am really thankful to all of you who has been watching this video because it is you who are making requests and I am making more and more videos. So please do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from physics for students. If you really want to talk to me, contact me because I always respond to WhatsApp and emails. This is my email ID where you can write. And just to note that I also do have a channel recently started where I am just putting exclusive videos on Einstein's general theory of relativity. Here it is. And if you feed further, then you can contact me and follow me on Physics for Student, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn page. Thank you very much for watching this video.